So, as the Minister said to me, as we're walking through, people sometimes don't get it. Green reserves are primarily about biodiversity, and I'll talk a bit about that. There's no doubt about it, they do a lot for biodiversity, but people often ask, what are they going to do for fish stocks? So I'll try and answer both of those questions. Um, the first one is this. Uh, there's been studies all over the world in 124 places, and quite a few in Australia, what we've got about 20 there in Australia, so we're well represented, where people have looked at uh, biodiversity and fish stocks and ecological processes inside reserves and outside reserves, and they've seen what happens. Uh, and this is well documented. It was a paper that came out in, uh, I can't remember it was 2009 or 2010, and this roughly tells you what happens. If you put something in a marine reserve in a before and after control and impact design, the biomass biomass of all the organisms goes up dramatically. The density of organisms goes up. Why does the biomass go up more than the density? Because most things get bigger. So when you stop killing fish, there's more of them and they're bigger. And that's something. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> so, so that piece of science is indisputable. Uh, people who are saying, What's, where's the science behind marine reserves? It's been said. But, you know, there's lots of variation, and two or three times it didn't actually work. But three times out of 124 is very, very few. The marine world is a very messy world, and you don't always get expect to have it. Often, of course, some of these marine reserves have some level of poaching. And most importantly, from a biodiversity perspective, on average, the diversity of the systems returned. And I think this is one of the things that I think are most profound from a biodiversity perspective, and that is the knock-on effect. So this isn't just about fish, okay, people fish fish, but fish change ecosystems. If there's more sharks, there's less small fish. If there's less small fish, there may be more coral cover or more kelp or more sea grass or whatever those small fish, herbivorous fish are eating. And so in fact, in no-take areas, and this is data from PNAS just last year where they did a big analysis for the Great Barrier Reef rezoning, they found that coral cover, I mean, nobody fishes coral. Coral cover is much better in marine reserves. And that's because the fishing, the, lot, the taking away the fishing, has increased the number of herbivorous uh, of fish that eat the algae, roughly speaking, that compete with the coral. And other things like urchins and stuff like that. And even more dramatically, most of you will know one of the biggest threats to the Great Barrier Reef was considered to be the crown of thorn starfish before we realised that pollution and climate change were probably bigger threats. But at one time, if you look back at your newspaper 15 years ago, the crown of thorn starfish was decimating the Great Barrier Reef. And it still does come through in big ways, destroying coral. In marine protected areas, in no-take reefs, the number of outbreaks of this pest starfish is dramatically reduced. So somehow, actually removing human impacts has these knock-on benefits to ecosystem function that are the other above and beyond bigger, more fish. Um, there's a few myths on some of these slides I've taken from Jessica Maywing from Professor of Fisheries from the University of West Australia. This is one of her slides. And she basically has done this a lot and talks about a number of myths. And one is one myth is, oh well, we can have maybe just recreational fishing everywhere. If we ban commercial fishing for a few places, that's enough. Well, partial take is not enough. You do need some parts of the ocean, some parts of the ocean that are no take to restore full ecosystem function. And there's lots of papers behind that. Um, some people say the marine reserves can't, can't work because the fisher, fishermen will break the rules. Well, despite we're a country of criminals, um, and I, my family came out in 1850 under various various circumstances, we're basically some of the most law-abiding people in the world. And virtually nobody goes in fishes in marine reserves. And the people, who are the people that stop you fishing in the marine reserve? Fishermen. Fishermen. My student was working in Morton Bay looking at the impact of marine reserves on crabs. Every time she, she was looking at crabs outside reserves, and she looked at crabs inside reserves, every time she went into the marine reserve to sample the crabs, the patrol boat appeared within half an hour to an hour because some fisher and an adult are in it. So the, the people who patrol the marine reserve system are fishers because if they can't fish there, 
that they'd be damned sure nobody else is. <laughs> Voting rates are very low in Australia, unfortunately. Intriguingly, I'll say one slight thing, this is again recent data from the Great Barrier Reef, as here you can see the density of sharks, all the things that are really paid, in fished areas are low. If there's limited fishing, you do get some benefits slightly. In no-take areas, you get substantial benefits. And for these top predators, actually no entry zones could be even better. There are very, very few no entry zones in the Great Barrier Reef, so none has to treat this data with some scepticism. And down the bottom, we're just looking at fish to no-take. From my, from my perspective, I'd just rather have more fishing because I hate sharks. But um, we do want functional ecosystems and we do want to recover our, our shark stocks. I mean, they're a valuable fishery. Most shark stocks are around 5 to 10% of their natural background levels. So they've been heavily overfished and that's a global phenomenon. In fact, ours are 5 or 10% are better off. You go to Indonesia, you can know, find the shark anymore. All gone. The whole ecosystem has ceased to function like a normal ecosystem. And I think this is the most important thing from a political perspective and for the people in this room who need to explain to others the impact of marine reserves. So this is the Great Barrier Reef. These are recreational vehicle registration data from coastal Queensland, from, all, from coastal Queensland abutting the areas abutting the Great Barrier Reef. In uh, June 2004, uh, Minister Kemp went to Cabinet and he turned a 4% marine protected area system into a 33% marine protected area system. What do you think happened to the rate at which people registered their recreational fishing vehicles intending to go fishing? Zoning plan funding. Obviously it's going to collapse, isn't it? Nothing happened at all. In fact, if anything, it went up faster. This is a reserve system from 5% to 33%. It had no impact on recreational fishing. Data, real data saying it has no impact. In fact, it what, what happened? There's a bump. What's the bump? It's a test to see if you're away. Global financial crisis. That stops people registering boats because you don't need a boat to leave. No. But that's about the only wrinkle in the recreational fishing. So, this is people, people I had bait owner, uh, people who own bait shops ringing up saying they're going to be business is going to be destroyed. Why am I not picking on them? Rat rubbish. Nothing's bad. So it's all it's disturbingly simple. The science is disturbingly simple. If you don't kill fish, they're bigger. A fish that's twice as big has more than twice as many babies. In fact, a twist fish that's twice as long probably has 10 or 20 times as many babies. So marine reserves with big fish are enormously productive. Those larval fish spread around the ocean, some stay put, some go far, some go to New Zealand. There. Some things like lobsters, for example, they might melt that way. But in the end, they move around. But these big fish in marine sanctuaries are enormously productive. They are the things that will secure recreational and commercial fishers' happiness and livelihoods. Um, in the end, if and when the marine reserve system goes in, however it goes in, within five years' time, the defenders of the marine reserve system will be the recreational and commercial fisheries because they're sustaining their livelihoods. So ultimately, this is partly about biodiversity. You don't, you can't have natural biodiversity in fish systems, but it, this is also partly about food security. Uh, and I think this is, I won't read it out, but this is a, a, a quite a, an eloquent statement by a number of scientists about why marine reserves play a very important role uh, for biodiversity conservation, for benchmarking what was nature once like, and for delivering resilient, robust fisheries that could be utilised well into the future.